I decided that I'm going to have a bit of a bread afternoon. So after making the soda bread, I'm now going to make a bread dough. This bread dough is really easy to use for a lot. For this bread recipe, you need a strong bread flour, which you might have at home like this, and plain flour. So I'm going to use 50-50. You can use whole wheat flour again if you've got whole wheat flour, or you can use um, strong whole wheat flour if you want to make it healthier. This is all I have in the house. This, you need 250 of each. So, 13 tablespoons, heaped tablespoons of strong white flour. So hopefully this will work out that it's the same amount of tablespoons for plain flour as well. 13 tablespoons of each one, heaped tablespoons of each flour to go in your bowl. So you should have 500 grams of flour in total. Into my flours, I'm also going to add a teaspoon of salt. Again, make sure it's not heaped, just a flat teaspoon, put your salt. Put it down one side of your bowl, so I'm putting it down the right hand side of my bowl. And then in my other side of the bowl, this is fast action yeast. If you don't have fast action yeast at home, you can use, um, if you have activated yeast, you just need to put it into the warm water first before you add it. And into your flour mixture, you're going to add to have, have to add warm water. Now don't add cold water or boiling hot water because the cold water won't activate the yeast and the warm water will activate it as well, whereas hot water will just kill it. And I like to think of the yeast as uh, fuzzy little animals that need a nice warm bath to make them grow better. For the water, you need 325 mils. Now I haven't thought about this, it's probably gonna take me a long time to measure with tablespoons. Okay, so I've measured 46 tablespoons of water. I'm also gonna add a tablespoon of oil. So you can use rapeseed oil, you can use olive oil, you can use vegetable oil. I'm using rapeseed oil because it was the closest to hand. So one tablespoon of oil. I'm now gonna mix all my ingredients to make it into a dough. Okay, so once it's starting to come together, I'm then gonna get my hands in. A wet dough makes better bread than a dry dough. So you can see this is quite nice and sticky. So I'm gonna pop it out onto the table. Try not to add any flour to your table because it will change the consistency of your dough. About five to 10 minutes. I'm not gonna record this, but I'm gonna knead and then let you see. So again, kneading, push the palm of your hand, you're stretching the dough, stretching the fibers out. So I'm pushing in with the heel of my hand. See how sticky this dough is? This is good dough if it's that sticky. And I'm gonna squish and pull and pull and I will show you what it looks like after 10 minutes. Okay, so I've been working out with my dough for 10 minutes. You can see how beautiful and smooth that looks. Yeah. And it's not so sticky as it rolls now. And that's lovely and smooth dough. Okay, so what you're gonna do after you've done that, you should put your bowl into soak before you need it. That is the top tip. Because the longer the flour is on, the, the longer it takes to wash. I'm gonna put a teeny bit of oil in my bowl, like this. And I'm just going to rub it around. So this one does need proving, and like the soda bread, which I made earlier, this one needs to rise. So I'm going to pick my dough up, pop it in my oiled bowl, which I've just rubbed a little bit of oil around my clean bowl, like that. Not lots, just like a teaspoon of oil in there. And then I'm going to cover it in cling film. If you don't have cling film, just put a tea towel over your bowl. And you want to leave it into a warm area to rise, um, to rise for about an hour. If, however, you don't want to actually use your dough today until tomorrow, just cover it, cover it in cling film and put it in the fridge till you need it tomorrow. And um, I think personally it makes the best pizza dough if you leave it in the fridge, make it the day before and leave it in the fridge till the next day. super dough I've had it in the fridge for 24 hours I'm literally just going to knock it back so for this you just literally knock the air out of it and this is called knocking back and then I'm going to bring it together again into a dough so you can 
can see it's quite sticky, which is good. That is a good job. Okay, I'm going to make a few different things. I'm going to start off with by making um, some breadsticks to show you that you can make breadsticks with this. Is my first one. So I'm going to put a bit of flour on the table. And then uh, with this, just want to roll it out, knead it back a little bit. And then to make my breadstick, so I've just got a little bit of flour in my hand to stop it from being so sticky. Okay, so to make breadsticks, I'm just going to roll this out. So I'm just going to get it going like this. And then I'm going to put it on my table. Now with breadsticks, you want to preheat your oven to 200 Celsius for breadsticks on my baking tray. You want an apple sized amount of dough like this. Again, put a little bit of flour down like that. And roll it. And then a little bit of flour on your rolling pin as well. It stops it from sticking to your rolling pin and also from sticking to your table. If this was going to be my nice pizza dough, you can stretch it this way as well. Obviously, I'm not a professional pizza maker, so it's not going to go as well for me. Um, okay, so another thing that you can make with this dough is pita bread. Again, the same. Put a little bit of flour on the table, a little bit of flour. Try not to add too much flour, as it will change the consistency of your dough. Now, this you want to make more of an egg shape. Now, for pita bread, you want your oven to be a bit... Higher, so you'd want your oven at 220 for a pita bread. This is what makes it puff because it heats really quick and makes it puff off. Now for this, for your pita bread, you want it to be about half a centimetre thickness, no thicker. Okay, I'm actually, you can also cut it into a shape if you want it into a shape. So another one I'm going to show you is also I'm going to show you how to do a flatbread. For my flatbread, I've got some seeds. So I'm going to put some onion seeds. You can put a bit of garlic in there if you want to put garlic in there as well. You can put um, other seasoning like herbs or anything. So I'm just going to knead the seeds in to bring them together. Okay, so for the flatbread, again, a little bit of flour. And you want to roll this out to just under a centimetre. Okay, so along with these, you can make pizzas, things like this. I'm also going to show you how you can make some bread rolls. I'm going to show you a little plat. So to make a plat, you need three even size balls, about the same size as a golf ball. Like that. And then you want to roll them into long sausages okay so for a plat once you've got yourself three long breadstick styles you're gonna just put it together at the top like this can you see so you've got three long style sausages and then all you're gonna do is plat you're probably all a lot better at plating than i am So another one you can do is a plat. And another one that you can do is just round balls as well, like bread rolls, or you could do little hedgehogs, like I'm sure you've done before. Okay, so here we have my mix of different things made from my multi-dough. To start off with, we've got my breadsticks. So with these breadsticks, you want to preheat the oven for 220, and these will take about 10 minutes to cook, as these are quite thin. So these will take 10 minutes. I'll show you what they look afterwards. Here's my pita bread. So with the pita bread, you can see I've tried to make it into a Easter egg shape. With the pita bread, this will take about 10, uh, maybe eight minutes at a high temperature of 220 in the oven. They should puff up, which I'll show you. Then I've got my bread rolls. So here I've got a bread roll with fennel and here I've got a bread roll made in a plat. 
So with these, you could glaze them with some milk or some egg if you want, just to make them a bit more golden brown. Same with these as well, if you wanted to. And um, with my bread rolls, these are gonna take about, probably about 10 to 12 minutes to do these in an oven at 220. Again, a high heat in your oven. Uh, for your pizza, this one here, obviously you need to put your toppings on it, so your tomato and then your cheese. Leave a centimetre from the edge so the tomato doesn't burn, and then whatever else you put on top of it. And this wants to go into a very hot oven. The hotter the oven, the better, as it will make the bottom nice and crisp, but ideally 220, and that would probably take about 12 minutes to cook at this side. Okay, so next here we have my different flatbreads. So I've got one with onion seeds and one with fennel seeds, actually made from the garden. Um, so with these, I'm gonna fry them, which I'll show you as well, a different way to cook them. They can also be used to make wraps. So wrap your food, they just need to be a bit thinner than that. So these ones are here. So these are gonna be fried and these are all baked. And I will show you afterwards. Okay, so for my flatbreads and um, like naan bread styles, I've just put a teaspoon of oil in here and I'm just waiting for it to get hot. Just make sure it's all around your pan. I've actually put chili oil in this one to add a bit more flavor. Okay, so this is really good. You can see the bubbles coming through from the naan bread. So this means it's ready to flip over. So I'm just gonna flip it over. Look at that, beautiful. So once it starts to bubble to the top, that means it should have cooked through to the bottom. And then once you flip it over, just pop it on for two minutes on the other side for your naan bread.